Hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed, a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that's caught our eye this week. I'm James and with me is regular Cars Guide expert contributor Peter Anderson, who's been connecting with cars, or not, <laughs> uh, and Tom who's sensing a city car revolution. Mm. And we'll look at the undisputed king of the comeback in this week's Must Watch. So stay with us. But first of all, some feedback. Welcome as always, and thank you uh, to those who have given us their feedback. Wax triple three, a regular. Um, now, we were talking last week, Crafty was uh, on a bit, a bit of a mission about the equipment that you do and don't need on your off-road vehicle. Um, some people over-egging it, some people underdoing it, uh, depending on what, what they're wanting to do. Wax333 says, in America, the IIHS, which is the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, has now included headlights in their safety testing, which includes distance, travel of light, and the focus of the beam. Uh, this should be included in ANCAP tests, and absolutely, I that's a pretty good idea. Absolutely, active safety. Yeah, but and, yep. and the disparity I find between models on sale now, yeah, uh, you'll get some, you know, you get halogen headlights. Some are great, some are dead some set, are so awful, awful. Yes, yeah. awful, awful. Yeah. yeah, that's true, isn't it? You can come up with a generic term that you know in your lizard brain says quality. Yeah, uh, but actually, when you investigate it a little more, uh, they're not all the same. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Wax. Um, one Nando. Um, says also similar uh, talking about Crafty's um, piece from last week. It's not just all the crap people put on their vehicles; it's the extra weight well, and associated yeah. GVM and GCM issues mm. when towing. Most are not even aware of, and it's so true. Mm. And just to spruik our wares, we do have a fantastic story authored by Mark Osler, which gives you chapter and verse on GCM, GVM, the tear, the all of the impacts. That everything from people in the vehicle to the load you have in the tray and how that impacts what you're able to tow in terms mm. of weight. Um, so vehicle weight's stuff. explained um, on on the website, but that is a very good point. Yeah, Thank he is you, Mr. Nando. Capacity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, obviously capacity. one Nando is heir to the Nando fortune, uh, and yes. I yes. think it was his idea to waft the the aroma of the of the stuff yeah. out onto the street. The so sugary, well done, one Nando. Aroma. Now, also on iTunes, we had a rate and review from DSA 1963. Mm. Five stars. Thank you very hey. much. He said, all the relevant news and vehicle reviews plus a guaranteed laugh. Love it. Well, thank <laughs> you very much, DSA 1963. You might be disappointed this time this around. This time around? Because Let's I'm see here. how we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke Holmes, um, one of the vehicles in the garage, in the shed last week was the V90 Cross Country. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luke says, does the V90 still have the fold-down seats in the boot like the old 850? The jumpers. If so, I'd take it over the XC90 any day. Sadly, the answer is no. And I, the Cleary family truckster is a Merc wagon, and it does have that fold-up seat in the back for seven seats. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, like rear-facing. Mm -hmm. So it's so handy. Uh but it's a bit embarrassing for the kids who are just <laughs> eyeballing the car behind the whole time. I loved it. When I, when I was growing up, uh, my family had a, a, a 850, Volvo 850 wagon, yep. and it was in that awful champagne colour. So it was the complete, with a beige interior. So it did was a complete have, um, package. Did you have a golden retriever? No. No. W no. Well, we had it. We, That's well, an option. That was yeah, an option. That <laughs> at Volvo dealers was a golden retriever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It goes with the car. No, but we had the fold-up seats in the back, and, and yep. uh, I loved it. My friends loved it. It was kind Good. of this quaint thing that... Sort of we call then. we always call it the way back seats. Yeah, <laughs> way back seats. But well, even even then, like in the early two thousands, it was like so rare to see those seats. Hmm. In the early nineteen eighties, <laughs> they'd just throw you in the back of the Sigma wagon and That's hope right. the cops didn't pull you Precisely. over. Precisely. <laughs> but I mean, I, my guess I don't know this for hundred percent sure, but I'd reckon it would be around um, impact protection in the rear of the car mm. to have. Yeah. Knees and torsos so close to the to the back of the car is probably not on these days. But um, so, and even as a kid, I felt like it was a death trap. Death trap. I yeah. felt like I really hope we don't have a even a minor collision. Even in, in a Volvo. <laughs> well, yeah. my significant other was with her best friend lying on the floor of her dad's Valiant Safari, <laughs> coming back from the beach, got rear-ended, and they just lay there with glass all over them oh. from the back window, going, um, "Oh God, what do we do now?" So. Yes, Don't thankfully, move. times have changed. Yes. Uh, all right, so we will move on. Thank you for all of that feedback. Um, very much appreciated. Peter, yes. we want to talk about connecting with cars, yes. which we all do happily, yes. but this is in a very specific uh, and technical way. Yes, so fans of my work, hi, Mum, uh, <laughs> will know that 
uh, I always rip into cars that don't have Apple CarPlay because why wouldn't you? It's six lines of code or something like that. It's not that difficult. Uh, but why isn't there more of wireless Apple CarPlay? Because so yep. many cars are coming with the wireless cheapad. Now, I, um, I, I misled uh, Editor Flynn the other day by saying that only BMW had it. Now, Audi have got it. So it's standard in the Q3. I think standard in the Q3. Okay. Yeah. And the new A1 has it as an option. Yep. And it's just so good because... Onto the Qi wireless charger. It connects by a Bluetooth. It's all hands-free. And most of the cars now go, oh, you left your phone behind. So that's like, yeah, that's right. really nifty. Right. But n- hardly anyone's doing it. Yeah. And you got to pay for it in a BMW, of course, which is like 700 bucks. But something. Audi, it's a freebie? Audi, it's yeah. Or, okay, or, or, it's, or, 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 or part of an option pack. I yeah, think it's right. like, as it will roll out through the range, it'll depend on the model. But it's not a subscription. You yes. get it or you don't. Yes. Right. Audi. And, so, it, and it's right. there forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and it also kind of makes me wonder... It, we were just saying before, why is there such a disparity between things like MMI and iDrive? Yeah. Yep. You know, these are both big companies, so I understand that maybe Suzuki doesn't can't sure. get there. But Toyota is massive, yeah. and their head units are utter They're really garbage. off the pace, aren't they? Well, it, it's really you know, quite striking. I, yeah. I, it, because I'm unoriginal, I keep making the same joke about Toyota um, head units. Is they're just some Somebody's just gone on an Alibaba binge and bought five million of the worst <laughs> We've got to use these things find. up. Yeah. 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 And so, and like, to fix that, all I have to do is put CarPlay and Android Auto yeah. in it. Uh, yeah. And then it's done and everyone will stop complaining. So, is Peter, is that potentially a case of Toyota saying, we must do this ourselves, we must do this in-house? Because I would have thought there'd be so much proprietary stuff out there that mm. they can just buy off the shelf and kind of ship in, yeah? Well, uh, so I've, I've Audi and BMW develop their own, as does Mercedes. Okay. So, yep. uh, there's, there's probably bits that are bought off the shelf. All but right. I think it's mostly done in-house. All right. And look... Doing user interfaces is hard. If you, I mean, you look at the difference between iOS when it first came out, so 10, 12 years ago now, yeah. and how it works now. It's not just the hardware. It's actually how many times you have to click to get through to something. And, you know, like I have to do corporate training sometimes. And you can tell someone who has designed it has not thought about the user interface. So mm-hmm. okay. the, the three big Germans really think about it. I mean, yep. the Mercedes one's not great, but the other two are really good. But then you get this Toyota thing with these tiny little targets on the screen. And it's like just... Just put the things on. They've, yeah. they've, they've probably cost them five bucks a car or something. I don't know what it is. Yes. It must be a licensing fee. And, and they've been slow mm. to adopt. Uh, you know, here we are talking about wireless Apple CarPlay yeah, yeah. and Android Auto that just to have that full stop yeah, yeah. has been pu- like pulling teeth. And, and some makers just give these reams of excuses as to why they can't put Apple CarPlay on. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite one was like, you know, Toyota said something, but oh, you know, it doesn't work. In the, blah, blah, blah. And then in the, so in the BRZ, which is a Toyota, yeah. has Apple CarPlay. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Oops. So you know. <laughs> the difference there being that the 86 and BRZ is a, a built-in uh, a Subaru plant. Yeah. So there may be some kind of connection there but that means it's easier to do. Or... I think the Camry has Apple CarPlay in the it, States. It, it, it will. So the, um, the one it, they brought out on the Camry and it's coming to the uh, 86 as well, mm. which was the most recent well, news. Has to, they're really. going to do like a facelifty sort of deal yeah, and yeah, yeah. it'll get it after that. In, in the US only though. Yeah. And so they are saying now that uh, anything that has the new multimedia system, which is oh. slightly better than the really bad slightly old one, slightly non-terrible. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, anything that has the new. So, and it's funny because they're still they've still got cars with the old one in it. So yeah. now you'll be able to get Corolla, Camry. Uh, I don't know anything with the new stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. You'll see the difference when you sit in a car in a dealership. <laughs> um, CHR. But all, all those yeah. ones. CHR, that's the at one, yeah. some point in the very near future, you'll be able to bring it in for be it a service or whatever, Master and style. there'll be a fee, yeah. and then they'll be able to put retrofit retrofit Apple CarPlay yeah, so and Android Auto. Mazda's connectivity. doing that for their old cars that yeah. that didn't have it, which is good. You're still paying five hundred bucks or whatever it is. Wow. But it's just. But the worst part is with Toyota, they're, they're, they've still got C, they've still got CHR and uh, Hilux, which their systems are so old they won't be able to do it. Yeah. So, and they're still they're selling a, them new. They're a giant car company. Yeah. They can. Yeah. And I suppose Toyota, you can do it. I suppose part of the frustration <laughs> is <in> you. <laughs> the frustration is also Peter. We we are in this world. We are constantly being told that technology is changing faster. That it's this you know mm. multiplier effect, and yeah. and it's unstoppable and yeah. yet yeah. Um, here are these situations where it takes literally years yeah. and things don't change whilst competition has, has leapt ahead yeah. yeah yeah and you know like it, it i guess it's it's kind of forgivable if it's a doubled in unit and most 86 owners are like no straight in with the pioneer and the 6.9s that's okay <laughs> right. but really it should be out of the box yeah yeah and 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 you look at uh Hyundai and i i 
like I usually measure other mass market systems yep. against Hyundai's one because it's so simple. Yeah, all right. the buttons. And the other thing about it is the the buttons are really easy to press. Yeah, yeah. So I find I find all these tiny buttons on the Toyota yeah. one. Yeah, or or the opposite, like with the um like the Audis and the BMWs. They they you know um, these amazing systems with giant screens yeah. and they're really high resolution. You know, you've got like sort of photo editing resolution on this yeah. tiny little ten inch screen. <laughs> right. But then the problem is. The buttons become so small; it's really hard to Tom, press I'm, them. Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about you. you. You're finding it difficult to press a button. No, no, no. But they're so small. So if ah, you're driving, on the if you're driving, yeah, yeah. and yeah. the it's screen's just over here, your finger, and it's just the like the home button. The, the home button is sort of five millimeters by five millimeters, yeah, and you're yeah. going. Yeah, well, when you get right. yeah, yeah, it, like I'm, I don't know, I've got Trump's small hands, and okay. I still have trouble with some of these yeah. systems. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, look, it's uh, that was first world problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a strange situation. It is but, very um, odd. We've we've had all kinds of assurances that things are going to be, you know, rectified uh, yesterday, but it it hasn't. It's happening in, in dribs and drabs, yeah, which is yeah. also part of the frustration. Yeah, it's yeah. very strange. All right, so we need some game lifting on that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, we've just looked after it. That's we've just fixed the problem. By yeah, yes. message yep. out there. So, yep. give it some uh, matter of minutes, and it'll all be all be uh, rosy. Now, Six Tom, code. we're going to move to yourself. Yes, and we're going from the cellar to the penthouse in terms of some of the tech that's lurking under the bonnet mm-hmm. of city-sized cars. Mm-hmm. Bring us up to speed there. Yeah, so uh, we've just seen uh, the reveal of the new generation Toyota Yaris, and also the. Honda Jazz. Yep. And it's so excitement machines. The big they are. Yeah. They're fun. They're great. Well, the bi- the biggest deal with these two new ones is um, they'll have hybrid engines. And you're sort of going, oh, whatever. Hybrid's been around for a while, and now you can get a you know a hybrid Rav Four and a hybrid Camry and a hybrid mm. whatever. And uh, that's very true. But the city car segment's a bit special, especially in Australia, because it's sort of typified by these kind of old gluggy engines that yeah. are thirsty and noisy and mm. rattly and they're not very high tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you can look at anything from a Kia Rio to, you know, the current Yaris or oh, the current Jazz the current and they're Yaris. just ancient It's kind of the last bastion often of naturally aspirated engines yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. A, a la- they're large, they now feel like large capacity yeah, yeah. Um, at Mo engines. Yeah. yeah. And there's very few of them that uh, offer a turbocharged even option. Yeah, right? I mean, like, how good would the Jazz be with that 1.5 turbo yeah. in it? Yeah. Mm. Great little car. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, total overkill. Total overkill. It'd be like a jazz hot well, hat. It'd just be nice to have torque. Jazz type R. Uh, have you guys seen the Hellcat powered Fiat 500? Though? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 oh, I think I saw it on Jalopnik. Anyway, it anyway. looks interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Continue, Tom. Sorry. So, um, basically the deal is both of these cars will be available in hybrid. The, the rumor, current rumor with the Jazz is that it will actually be hybrid only. Okay. Um, yep. But yep. the Yaris will have uh, an option of uh, two drivetrains. One will be, a, and they're both brand new. And wow. and this new Jazz is also on Toyota's new modular architecture. TNGA. TNGA. Yep. yep. Um, and so, about time. What, yeah, about time. So yep. what that means is, for the first time, you know, ever, uh, consumers looking for something like this. Apart from the Prius C, obviously, we'll be able to get a hybrid engine. So it's not a plug-in hybrid; it's a kind of charge-as-you-go style. Yeah, it's hybrid. like a kind of Prius, yeah, those, Prius yeah. style hybrid. Yeah, yeah fine. And um, yeah, so it's looking really good. I think it looks really good too. Uh, mm. Actually, I think there's a, almost an element of uh, uh, Ford Fiesta ST in it, like it's got the, kind of angry face. The Yaris, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, actually, I mean, the good. Yaris has a dedicated fan base. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a popular. I mean, that cars in cars in general are on the nose SUVs are mm. you know everything that everybody wants but still there are people that love the Yaris and um, it's interesting if but you're I, thinking it's a good one I still think it's interesting how many makers are still persisting with these cars even though they're telling us that they're all going away yeah. I mean we've both driven the Audi A1 this week yeah. Yeah. what a cracking city car yep. not, allowed, not allowed to talk about it though. No, no, well <laughs> it just looks gotta... good when I say cracking it looks good well, yeah. I suppose, <laughs> I suppose um, if, you, if you are a large manufacturer and you have the wherewithal to produce the breadth of offering that you mm. produce, it doesn't cost you as much to keep this one ticking yeah, along. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, you never go broke making a profit. Yep. And if you mm. can get your production numbers right and your distribution at the right price and sell those cars mm. and make a profit on them, why not? Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta... and, and that's good. I'm happy. But, and it's good to see that companies aren't trying to just... Like like with Mitsubishi, they've just thrown everything, Dropped everything. out and yeah. gone. We're just doing SUVs. SUVs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to remember though, it's a market thing too. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, things like hatchbacks, sedans, they'll sell really, really well in uh, a lot of Asia and yeah, yes. um, great even point. Europe. 
Great yeah. point. Um, and so this is uh, one of the other things as well is um, we were looking over at the Honda E really hoping we were going to get that. And yeah. now the announcement is, as of yesterday, yeah. that, sorry, uh, Honda is saying that no Honda E for us. The UK will get it's it. It's really a shame. It is such a shame. And it's, it's not going to the States either. either. No, it won't go to States. So, so what? Just Europe and just Europe and Japan. <laughs> Dead yeah. set. Yeah. There won't be a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 prob- with push rods. That's right. And it probably doesn't have Apple <laughs> and a pickup body. Yeah, with no Apple <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's really a shame. That's, that's such an yeah, exciting that's little very car. very short-sighted. Mm. Yeah. Even if you only sell a few hundred of them, it's worth having We do a lot there. for yeah. Honda. Yeah, um, absolutely. As a, as a brand. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it's older. I actually think that, that Honda E is a far more, far more of a statement about Honda than the NSX. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah most definitely. And it, and it wouldn't be a bad move for them no. to do that either. No. And, and so for those of you who don't know, I'll just run you through the little E quickly. So it has a 110 kilowatt, 300 newton meter... Uh, Electric which is, motor, which is heaps, yeah. which is a lot. Like it, it's yeah. going to be a fun little thing to drive, yeah. and uh, they're promising. I think it was three hundred and twenty kilometers of range, and so. it has the most insane turning circle. It's like a London cab, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, it helps when you don't have to stack engine and transmission yeah, on top yeah, of each yeah. other. But so. I think it's rear wheel drive. The, so, oh, that's true. So actually, like, yeah. you know, you just, <laughs> and the screen <laughs> that goes from one one A pillar to the other, yeah, yeah, is just yeah, yeah. immense. Oh yeah, and there's no mirrors, so the and, yeah. but they've placed oh. the. What it's very it concept car, isn't it? It's so cool. But they've placed the, the screens that show what's behind you, where the mirrors are. So you've got a natural kind of... It just looks amazing. All right. And just quickly at the other end of the spectrum. So uh, when I was on the phone to Toyota seeing uh, if you know they'd confirm whether we'd get both of the Yaris drivetrains, the petrol and the hybrid, they mm. said, yes, we're going to get both in Australia. And I also asked them if theoretically a hot hatch version existed, a... A successor to the mm. uh, Yaris GRMN that they did in Europe, um, would you have room for it? And the answer was most definitely yes. So Toyota do seem a bit interested in having fun stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. only a small car; it, it doesn't take nice. up much room. Yeah. So, and look, if I was a betting man, I'd say I'd say they're going to do one. Great. I'd say they're going to do a go that, fast one. That would be great. Yeah. Now, all right, cars, cars, more cars. Mm. All we do is <laughs> that cars. Is what we talk. <laughs> about. So yeah. um, <laughs> it's a good thing it's called the Cars Guy podcast. Guys, guys, that's that's podcast. Right. <laughs> Uh, more cars, this time in our garage mm. and what we've been driving during the preceding week. And Peter, you've been in a British product and it has some specifics around its interior that's mm. caught your attention. Tell us about it. So I, I had a Range Rover Velar, the P380, which is the supercharged V6, uh, soon to be sent on to the great... Uh, Junkyard in the sky. Oh, really? That well, dropped Ford that, V6. That, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so the it star. can't live on forever. Yeah, yep. my understanding is the Ingenium straight six will end up under that bonnet. Great. Uh, and I loved it. Like, beautiful thing to drive. That supercharged V6 is so smooth. And supercharging, while not as no, nearly as efficient as turbocharging, it is lovely because you've got no lag and it just goes. So And it sounds yep. good too. Yep. But what really got me about this Velar was the spec. It had the vegan interior and it's beautiful. Like, yeah. it looks, when you, when you open the door, you look at the. The perforation on the seats, which is obviously in the tofu, <laughs> <laughs> and then a soy no. soy based yeah. amalgam, mung, it's mung bean on the <laughs> mung bean gear shifter. It's in a Union Jack pattern, is what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> and it looks like uh, why is, why does tofu exist? Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a topic for another another podcast. podcast. Yeah. Sorry, I'm surprised sorry, it hasn't been made into an alternative fuel. Yeah. Anyway, um, and it looks so. It looks like sort of suede Alcantara, but then you touch it and it's fabric. Okay. Oh. And so it looks great. Yep. And it feels really good. All right. But also there's other elements in the car, like the wood, the the, the lovely blonde wood uh, on the doors. Yep. So there's no leather in there. And I've actually had quite a few people talk to me about cars with vegan interiors, and they would not buy cars that had leather. Leather in them. interior. Okay. So having that, but. When I first heard about vegan, I thought, oh, here we go. Um, it's just going to be scratchy, hessian, because sure. they can get away with it. Yeah, it's a there's, plastic. And, there's yeah. actually been a huge, like, it's clearly been a big effort to go and find the right types of material yep. to make this a really nice interior. Did you manage to spill anything on it? Uh, no. No, okay. No, I don't. Not good enough. I don't drink <laughs> or eat in the car because I like to drive. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Oh, well, that's good. So it not only looks good, mm. um, but it felt uh, it was really nice good, to yeah. sit in. I would actually now say, I, I, in that car, I would have that fabric interior. The that BM, BMW i3 is pretty special like that it's too. It's like that. I love that. Like love that, that interior. Yeah. And that was an early attempt at that kind of vibe. So it had that really cool shredded tyre 
Yeah, and stuff. it was like recycled plastic. Some kind yeah. of yeah. flax. Yeah, yeah. Some fla- yeah something yeah. like that. But, but Put also, the word flax in. It gets people's attention. <laughs> the, the woolen... Uh, the woolen-based uh, uh, seat trim was always really nice, but yep. I did love that. I love the way in the in the i three that the you got that wave of oh, wood across. Lovely, Just stunning. And I, personal preference was always for the lighter interior. There's yes. a, a yeah, dark yeah, I one, agree. but I really yeah. like the light. Yeah, no, one. that really worked. My my wife calls the i three the Pope Mobile because of the way you sit in it. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, and sh- we all like. I think we're all in agreement. It's a fantastic, beautiful car. environment. But I really like the way uh, that that uh, JLR are looking at those in, uh, extra. Uh, there's, there's, it, it's, it's a way to open up a new market. I'm sure, sure. sure. Uh, but I, and I, and I'm, I'm thinking because there's a lot of bamboo in it. The mm-hmm. impact on the environment's low, mm-hmm. which is also a good thing. Yep. So yeah, and I'm, I really liked it. And I think so. I don't know about you, uh, you people, but uh, the number of friends and family now that are actually vegan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's gone from fringe to mainstream yeah. pretty rapidly. Yeah. So if people are reluctant to option a car with leather in it, and there's a, a good feeling, good looking alternative. That's smart to I'll, be in there. I'll, I'll be really interested to see how quickly the co- their competitors um, pile jump in. into it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, apart from anything else, the last terrific. I think it's a, a really good car. But cool. the, but, but there are a few uh, competitors. Well, not necessarily direct competitors that do have vegan options. Like you can get it in uh, like the Teslas and stuff. And yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ve- vegetable vegetable meat yeah. as well. Yeah. You know when you, you when you get stop it at in. the shops. <laughs> well, Hungry Jacks is doing uh, apparently doing meat free burgers, and so you know, fantastic. So, becoming so if you go through the drive through in your villa with mm. the vegan interior, offer the non meat Hungry Jacks. Yeah. You're living the Australian dream. <laughs> You're the, the 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 future Australian the future dream. dream. <laughs> Lovely. We've had the discussion uh, back and forth as to whether or not the villa stacks up. Um, M4 Matt Campbell, for example, doesn't feel it has the tough stance that you need when it's an SUV. Others, myself included, think it's absolutely beautiful and it's just one of those. It's almost like a custom car that's been mm. shaved, as they say. It is. You know, like the door handles aren't there. Yeah. It just it's so sleek and and uh, slick. Anyway, I think it's got a lot of LRX in it. Yeah, and but I think uh, fundamentally we can just say that M4 is wrong. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that's that's not La- Land Rover do a really, really wrong. <laughs> they, they do a really good job of faithfully replicating their their concept cars. Like their concept yeah, yeah. cars are never too far but from ten, reality. Ten years down the track. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, which is so good because you look at one now and you go, "Oh, will it look like that?" Like even the new Defender, that looks like it the DC one hundred. Looks like the DC one hundred somehow. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Jeremy McGovern obviously has a lot of uh, sway with yes. the um, you know high ups in in JLR. Yes, that's very. Now, good. Tom, the car that you have been mm-hmm. steering, fill us in. Mm. I, I've had a Mitsubishi Outlander. Yep. LS seven seat. Wow. Um, now, is that an LS one or an LS three? <laughs> yeah, <Sorry>. indeed. <laughs> now it's well, it's the I guess it's the upper mid spec because right you've got the top spec is the exceed. Yeah, so it's the mid spec. Yeah. Yes. LS okay. is the middle spec in Mitsubishi Palos. Um Now, look, I'll be completely honest. When I got the keys to this thing, I was thinking, oh, really, it's going to be the most boring car. Oh, okay. And the, you were right. Well, look, to a degree, but it's um, competent. Who were you travelling with? <laughs> Nobody. Well, yeah, no, I didn't get to. I didn't get. Well, I didn't get to fill all seven seats, but I did sit in all of them just to test them out. <laughs> did so, you really? Yeah, I did. I, I would have loved to have seen that. <laughs> well, I wonder who watched you doing that. Well, part just of me. Like, what the? Just, yeah. hell is well, that no, going? actually, it's funny you say that because I found this spot and it, it, you know, it was next to a park and there was this. Pa- there was this guy on a ride-on <laughs> mower. So I'm there. I'm there in this little like car park, and you know, I'm taking photos of this car, and there's this. Sort of mildly, idly interested guy on a ride on mower. He goes past every minute. So the path so. that he's mowing just gets very zigzaggy. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Strange comes over towards you. Yeah, and and so I'm getting in and out. I'm sitting in the back seat. And at one point, I'm sitting in the back seat, and he's just sort of like looking for me so he doesn't hit me. So he sort of stopped next to my car, and he's going. <laughs> See, normally it's us watching people do weird things in car parks because you know when we go out shooting videos, it's always yeah. in car parks. I mean, and there's always some bloke sitting there with a bottle of Jack and a in a battered old Mazda three going. Yeah. <laughs> and because you were jumping from seat to seat, you were getting pretty sweaty, so you had to kind of take your it's jumper off. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's right. exactly right, uh, mate. Um, what a, what he's a on a strange scene. He's on the list with now. a guy on a ride on mower watching. Yes, but look, so I could have done that at home and not in public. <laughs> I'm just putting that out. There. I could, I could have, but I didn't think of it until I was taking the photos. If so all right, so, if you so, need a drive. Way, just come to my place. So the seats, you checked out every seat, 
And how? Did, so it's sorry. There are seven of them. There are seven of them. And mm. how did you go in that critical kind of back row, which is the way way back kids yeah. type? Yeah. So basically, this thing looks like a, a gigantic tin can on wheels, yeah. and it is exactly that. Yeah. So right. yeah, access yeah. to the second row is actually really good because yeah, the, the second door is really big. It opens to almost the ninety degrees. Door. And so you can clamber in and out of it quite easily. And the, it's got one of these kind of trick interiors where the second row is on a rail. Oh, and it actually, nice. it will go yeah, way so forward. Like, yep. um, so not only does that give you a gigantic cab- like a gigantic storage area when yep. you've got all the seats down, but it also makes it easy to get into the back seat. Now, with the back seat, so they obviously haven't compromised with like the fuel tank or the spare mm. wheel or anything. So the floor is extremely high. So... Yeah. Even though, uh, yeah, even though I could move uh, like the second row forward on rails to the point where I was still comfortable and I was still comfortable in the back row in terms of my leg room, yes, I had to sit like this because the roof is too uh, low. You are and then the people listening in iTunes, bit, Tom yeah. has tilted his head. Tilted, yes. And what did the guy on the right on mower make of that? When um, you were actually well, I mean, because I was in the back seat and I'd shut the door. Oh, so and now you've got your head tilted sideways. Yeah, that that he was, he was there with his phone up against oh, the window. Geez. Oh yeah, I've just got to change. Tilt the your head the other way. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the right on Mo guy was well. That was the point where he was very confused and he was looking for me so he didn't run me down. Take your shoes off. <laughs> So we get into the comment. Commenters so asking to see our feet. The, yeah. high, the high floor is just obvious. Then yeah, the, the high floor is obvious, but as I said, it's not the worst part because okay. you can move the second row forward far enough so you can actually, for an adult, you can even fit your legs in. It's just right. there's the headroom is so poor, even for someone. Who, I'm like I'm not super tall. No, sure. No, um, like you know, I, to have your head on the side, I've that's had pretty cool. Two yeah. six foot plus teenagers in that third row, and they were comfortable. Until my wife took the wheel because she was car sick. We were going down to Mega Long Valley and she put it on its door handles because she was just wanted the day to be over. Really? But yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's actually a very – it is fit for purpose. I, I, take yep. a lot, I take a lot of chunks out of the Outlander, but it's a bargain. It's yep. got all the stuff. It looks okay now. And it can genuinely and it can carry seat seven adults. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's pretty special. Yeah. The, it's pretty the engine we had it's was narrow, the... narrow, but... Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is narrow. The engine we had was the 2.4. Mm. And so I was expecting it to be kind of like this thrashy affair. And like to a degree it is, but it's really responsive. And that's one thing I liked about yeah. it. it. It doesn't have, from nothing, it doesn't have much trouble moving the bulk of the Made Outlander. Mate of mine had a thrashy though. affair not long ago. <laughs> it, um, it's had a massive impact on his family. <laughs> But less less said the better, really. The better. It, the, so the two point four, I don't like. I quite like the diesel because it also has a proper transmission, not that awful CBT. Yes, that's right. But if you can do it, get the hybrid. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, do, like, yeah. I just think that that's that's the bargain. So it surprised you a bit in terms of its capacity. And yeah. the engine came up a little uh, a little shinier than you thought it was going to. Yep, and uh, the steering is really light, so it's okay. easy to manoeuvre. And the suspension is an interesting one because, um, yeah, it doesn't have much feeling though. No. You know, it's not a driver's car. No. Um, the um, suspension is an interesting one because you know day to day it kind of undulates and it's very soft and mm. you don't really feel the road. But then I feel like that I think it's the the springs are soft, but the dampers are hard because okay. if you hit a hard object, <laughs> you, you feel that hard yeah. object. Righto, but it feels floaty at other times. Yeah. yeah. I think it needs the dampers to keep the body from sinking. Yeah. Yeah. So it de- it deals really well with like corrugations, minor bumps, like y- your general yeah. stuff. It's reasonably okay. handy off road too. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and and yeah. just yeah, um, reasonably. Question without notice, what are we talking ballpark price wise? Oh, for the uh, it's mid 30s or something. Mid 30s. Yeah, mid 30s. Really yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's surprisingly cheap. It's a okay. lot of metal for the money. And if if you can put up with the fact that it is deathly dull. Yeah. Um it, it's it, like I mean, I remember the first time we drove one in our family. My wife said, "What I really liked about this car is, you just don't have to care about it because <laughs> it does everything you need it to do. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a bejeweled for like you know. Yeah, you you buy a C. Well, it might have uh, like, might have nice reflected car. on her um, choice of life partner as well. Yeah. You just hey, you just don't have to care. It's about It's very it. utilitarian. Much <laughs> like Peter. Everyone gets one <laughs> mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We'll we'll have to move on in the interest of time. I'll just chip in quickly with a steer of the Hyundai Venue Go. So the mm. Venue is the new entry point into the whole Hyundai range. Happens mm. to be an SUV, city sized. And this is twenty thousand dollars, nineteen nine ninety. Mm. It was a manual car, six speed yeah. manual. Very rare to yeah. be driving yeah. with three pedals on the floor these days. Um, so put it on the road, and it's it's still in the low twenties. 
1.6 litre four with that six speed, 90 kilowatts, which isn't bad at all from a 1.6 litre engine, 150 odd newton metres. So it's not going to um, kind of it's rip the bitumen off the road. No. On the negative side, let's kick it off with the good or the bad news. Bad news first. I find the gearbox was very slushy and yep. um, felt indistinct. The clutch was ordinary too. It was, you had to really be greasing the clutch to, to get a smooth kind yeah, of right. drive moving the inertia of the car. Is it that same sort of slushy manual that's also in Kias and it's yeah, like look, six it's, speed? And it, yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. It just doesn't have that nice feel that you'd like. I, I like driving a manual as much yeah. as the next person, but you want it to be a good one. This yeah. one yeah, well, yeah, wasn't because there's so few of them. And it's pretty gutless. Mm. So you do yeah. find yourself rowing through it a lot to yep. be getting going. Now, other side of the coin, I found it really comfy. Mm. And it is a really comfortable it, it car. Really it really is yeah. um, a pleasant car to drive around the city. Yep. Apple CarPlay was in there, reversing camera. And Android Auto. And I think it looks all right. Yeah. Um, so, you yeah. know, as a $20,000 proposition, uh, it's got a lot going for it. Yeah, yeah polarizing looks. Yeah. I, I, I liked it. My yeah. wife hated it. I quite, hated it. I quite okay. like it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, but what I think, what I do like about it is that um, there aren't many. SUVs that small. Yeah. Uh, the Ignis, which I really like, it is cheaper, but yeah, you put three people on the back of that. And yeah, it's right. Dragging its Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I didn't actually have the opportunity to mm. uh, cause to put anyone else in the car. I was just yeah. driving it solo, which I can only imagine would have exacerbated the engine uh, yeah. shortcomings. Yeah. But, but rear seat in the venue, much better than the CX3, okay. which okay. is bizarre because the CX3 is ah. technically a step up. Right. Um, uh, so, and very good uh, interior space all around and a very clever boot, I thought. Did you notice? Yeah, the I did. Had that two yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's great. Position thing. So I, really I enjoyed it. Only brief, but um, enjoyed the experience. And for those that don't know, uh, it is the entry point in the Hyundai range now yeah. because uh, circa the end of this year, there'll be no more accents. That's right. Bye bye. That's yeah, right. That's, yeah. that's okay by me. We're losing it. about time. <laughs> we're, lo- we're losing our accent. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Never all right. mind. <laughs> We're moving on mm. to the most telling part of the program now. It's time for Musk Watch. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Big news, music. first of all, is we were we were talking recently about how critical uh, the Q3 results mm. were going to be for Tesla. and That's the third quarter for so you non-financial. Elon, <laughs> Elon tweeted out, sure enough, Elon tweeted out this week, uh, Tesla Q3 results, Shanghai Giga ahead of schedule. So the new Giga factory in Shanghai. Mm. Model Y ahead of schedule. Mm. Uh, solar installs, plus 48% from Q2, but I think they're on the floor in Q2. So yeah, saying, yeah. you know, 48% is a bit, of a, <laughs> uh, a, a bit uh, cheeky. GAAP, which I did some Googling, I'm not an accountant, generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, profitable. Oh. There are two ways of yes, looking at the yes. books, and this is the one he's choosing. <laughs> and positive free cash flow. So all positive things. Mm. Followed it up with... Super proud of Tesla team for great execution and support of Tesla customers. Greatly appreciated. And sure enough, it's because, and uh, shout out to Market Watch and Claudia Assis, who uh, wrote a story about uh, the results, because it's all happened Thursday, Australia time, Wednesday night, um, mm. US time. Tesla Inc. shares rallied more than 20% Whoa. in after-hours trading on Wednesday after the Silicon Valley electric car maker reported a surprise quarterly profit and said key projects, including the next vehicle in its lineup, were ahead of schedule. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, the why is just Model 3, Photoshop, grab B pillar, and lift. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so easy. So really, oh, yeah, yeah, it's like, something I could I do mean, for let's, sure. Let's not get... <laughs> I, you know, I, I, like, look, in yeah. the pictures, it doesn't look great. But neither does the Model 3. Uh, the Model in, 3 looks okay in real no, life, no, though. No, see, they all, all of them look like renders from an early Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and I think what's going to age Low poly. Them is that lack of detailing. Yeah, gonna, yeah, like, yeah. The, the Model S is now starting to look like, like an early Outlander, yeah. a bit stark. Well, yeah. we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. So uh, they earned $143 million in the third quarter, 80 cents a share, wow. um, compared with $311 million or a $1.82 a share in the same quarter a year ago. So, yeah, Q3 not, a, not as good, but nobody expected them really to turn a profit like that. No. So, uh, yeah, the Model Y is going to be built in Fremont, and allegedly it's ahead of schedule. No surprise. Same, many similarities with Model the 3. Model 3. Um, and the stock zoomed past $300 in after-hours trading. And it had traded as low as two hundred fifty-one dollars in the regular session prior. Mm. So wow. that's, that's that's pretty a big special. Jump. One of the interesting things that came out of the investor call that uh, put all of this stuff out there is, and this is a hat tip again to TechCrunch. Uh, 
Tesla continues to produce the Model S and Model X more for, quote, sentimental reasons than anything else, CEO yeah. Elon Musk said Wednesday during a call with investors, calling the electric vehicles, quote, unquote, niche products. So Tesla yeah. is increasing production on Model S and X lines for the quarter, for this quarter, so the last quarter mm. of the year, in response to increasing demand for electric vehicles more, more broadly. Yep. Uh, but... Musk did take time to rave about the Model S, particularly the newer version, which has a new Raven powertrain. Raven. Uh, it's so easy to drive. It makes you feel like Superman driving this car, he added. And it's incredibly safe, which it is. I think it absolutely oh, yeah, very safe. the yeah, ANCAP yeah. stuff. Musk then described the X as the Fabergé of cars Ooh. before adding that, quote, it's an art piece, basically. So, no, so what, he, what he's exactly going to say? What, what he's going to say is he's, he's going to build about ten of them, and then they're going to become collectors. No, items. no. I think what I think it's interesting when you ponder that. What I'd been thinking in a very conventional way was, well, where's the new Model S? Mm. What he's saying is, no, no, Model S goes, and we just concentrate yeah. on Model Y and Roadster and the pickup. We're going to do the semi, and those ones go into history. Yeah. And then some further down, we'll have a new mid-sized car or whatever, but it might not be Model S. It Can might I, be something right. else. Can I just put out that I think what he's going to do is hold on until the Y is out so he can say, so he gets his dopey, sexy lineup, the S3X. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah. yes. So I did see reference to that in yes. some of the reports. Sexy yeah. in Fremont. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, well done, Elon. Um, now, also on other Elon matters outside mm. of Tesla, he has uh, performed his first space tweet, which is, I think, super impressive. Mm. Um, thanks to Forbes and Jonathan O'Callaghan, Musk said on Twitter he was attempting to send a tweet through space via Starlink satellite. So he's already fired some of these Starlinks up to into space. Two minutes later, he followed up with, whoa, it worked. Yeah. Um, so, suggesting that SpaceX's Starlink service was at least partially up and running. So all he's really done is just routed internet traffic from up to his, a satellite. To a satellite. Like that's that's not rocket science. Well, it is actually. But yeah, to, to get the thing up there. <laughs> but it is impressive that it's working, and it's a it's a good way to say here's how I've it. It is definitely working. rocket science, but it's not brain surgery. Not brain surgery. Right. <laughs> the the so the thing that gets rocket me surgery. again, it was a reminder of the sheer numbers that we're talking here. Yeah. Um, the first 60 satellites in the Starlink constellation were oh, launched nice. in May. Um, and then the company currently has a license for 12,000 satellites in the constellation and like recently that. applied for an additional 30,000, right? Because they're very small, these oh, things. They're little things. Now, yeah. Yeah. That, that caused me to think, who licenses satellites? Who says, yeah, you yeah. can do the satellites? Don't we all own space? That's yeah. my space. Isn't there an international space That's my agency? space. That's a good idea for yeah, a, that the uh, social media. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it's actually the US Federal Communications Commission that says, yeah, you can send 30,000 satellites up into space. Oh. Um, what, what if Uncle Vladimir wants to do the same thing? Well said. We'll continue <laughs> to upgrade the network until mid to late next year. This is um, the um, SpaceX senior person saying mm. we're hoping for 24 launches by the end of next year presuming spacex plans to continue launching 60 satellites per launch that would suggest the company is planning to launch 1440 starlink satellites by the end of 2020 now several other companies including amazon and oneweb are developing their own competing space yeah. internet services yeah yes and you've got china and then there's russia yeah. and india and whoever else wants to Space is just this rapidly is a, filling up with This stuff. is a closet attempt to sort out climate change because the sun won't be able to get, get through, through all these satellites. <laughs> well, it'll certainly uh, reduce the instances of melanoma and other yeah. kind of skin cancer-related issues. One, well, one these, these earlier. like, they, I mean, look, to put it in perspective, though, these satellites are very small. And they, they had, like, one of the nose cones of the rockets. And so I think how it works is they fire the rocket up and the rocket kind of disassembles and these things fly, fly around. Out. Yeah, oh, and they're anyway. kind of like, they're, they're these little, th they're not very big. I just don't like it, Tom. I no, don't no, no, like, I don't no, no, like it. Fair enough. And, and there's and there's a criticism to be had there because um, I, I mean a lot of people now are saying change. we've we've launched so many rockets up there with you know you got GLONASS, you got uh, it's space ESA's network, you got NASA. It's stuff up it's there. garbage. There's yeah. garbage in space, and they say Earth has now got a ring, like like, like, like a bath. It's got a ring of yeah, like a bath. It's yeah, like it's I say, like it, of garbage. Yeah. Yet yeah. again, reconfirms my theory. We are just ruining this planet. We are the first yep. cancer cell yep. in the cosmos. We're just moving to the next cell, Moon, then Mars. Well, Elon wants We're to We're starting to Mars. take it apart. Well, I now can't get the image out of my head of an Elon marionette. <laughs> a Thunderbirds. <laughs> in a space. Thunderbirds Elon. Oh. Yeah. 
No, an epi- a special episode of Thunderbirds uh, where the, like Elon's kind of like a He'd super be up villain. in Thunderbird 5, the one that's <laughs> just, you know, rotating yeah. around the earth. Th- now, Thunderbird S3XY. Oh, well, yeah. So here we are. The share price is just a few cents under $300 oh, at last yeah. check, two ninety nine sixty eight. So it was two fifty nine seventy five last week, so about a $40, a $40 or 15% increase yeah. as of right now. Investopedia says, yes, that Tesla shares rose over 20% during after our trading on Wednesday. Um, June, it hit its year-to-date low of $178.97. Oh, so it's when you think about it. June to October, it certainly made a comeback. And Investopedia says that short sellers piled into Tesla for the first half of 2019. Yeah. They've been steadily covering their exposure yeah, since June. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, that sentiment is changing, and that Probably is very interesting. Court for doing so well. <laughs> well look, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've laid into Elon a lot in this podcast over the years, mm-hmm. but uh, like, it looks like he's finally got his act together. He, let's see. Yep. The, the, the roller coaster ride continues. It is a speculative At stop. the moment, we're up the top, and maybe a hill beckons. It could <laughs> be exciting. Yes, it could be. Yep. <laughs> now, okay, with that, I think we've reached the finish line. Mm. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. And thank you, Tom. Thank you. And thanks, as always, to Mr. Pritchard for his nimble finger work on the buttons and sliders. The uh, ostrich plume cape is a winner, by it the is. way. It's very yeah. nice. Uh, yeah. really fetching design. The, the hairstyle's fabulous. He does, he's got to be careful he doesn't go under the Montague Street Bridge in Melbourne, though. Yeah. And I also wonder how many ostriches went into it. Yeah. 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 Oh, you murderer. Mm. He's not a it's vegan not a, interior buyer. No, interior. he's not. <laughs> Please pass on the word about the podcast and let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. If you're an iTunes listener, please rate and review us. Thank you, DSA 1963. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube. But before we go, some breaking news. <laughs> AEB is brilliant. <laughs> That's appalling. Gotcha.